we have a biggie, right? We got uh, Tesla coming out with earnings. And again, for weeks and weeks and weeks, and I got, I got this question today in, in the live webinar, like, you know, what do I think about Tesla's earnings? Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody, and uh, welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is uh, doing great. Hope everybody had a good day of trading today. Um, you know, Bulls did a great job this morning, and they did a bad job this afternoon. Let's talk about this real quickly. So, uh, I thought today was going to be uh, a pretty important day. Uh, technically for the market. Again, with all the headlines aside, we obviously know uh, what's in front of us. But again, the reason why I thought today was going to be a very important day for the bulls, again, yesterday we closed on this rising trend line support. And again, it was very, very important for the bulls uh, not to give up this trend support today and obviously start falling back in the middle of the range. Obviously, if that would be the case, you know, we would have a lot of lower prices. So the bulls did a very good job. And if you look at the 60-minute view uh, 60 minute view of the queues, you can see, you know, the market yet for the first, you know, four candles went very, very high and everything was good. Um, ironically, around 2.30, if you look at my uh, regular Twitter account, you know, joking around, I said, I'm looking literally because we held that rising support. And I said around 2, 2.30, I literally have 8,600 setups uh, for tomorrow's session. Obviously exaggerating, but again, kind of put, you know, put it into perspective how many setups were correlating that we held that rising support. And the one thing that continues to happen over and over again, and I, I continue uh, to really drive the point home, especially in the live webinar, that the afternoon session is the absolute most random thing uh, that can happen to a trader. I say this all the time, you know, all the news, it just, it, it really feels like Every single news blip will find you. If you're long, they're going to come out with something crazy news and your stock's going to get murdered. If you're short, they're going to come out with some crazy news and the market's going to rally. And that's what we have like clockwork every single day after 2 o'clock. And again, you don't need me to, you know, to tell you what the headlines were. Again, you can see uh, just what happened in the last you know, two, you know, hour, hour and a half of the day. Just complete, just complete destruction of prices. And we literally went from... 8,600 setups for tomorrow's session, and we're right back to where we were last night. Everybody see that, guys? We're literally right back to uh, where we did on the closing basis yesterday. And again, as today was an important session, now comes tomorrow. Because right now, again, this is our definitive line in the sand on the queues. You know, the queues right here sitting on this uh, 82 area. This is a big matzo ball right here, okay? And if the bears take control of this, we're going to start going lower. It didn't help today after the close. This beautiful candle here is brought to you by, by the good folks of Netflix. Obviously, Netflix is not helping things out. What is helping things out and, and members of the tech community really, really love is what's going on in the Snapchat community. Apparently, Kylie Jenner, when she went out uh, a year ago and said, who the hell uses Snapchat? Apparently, people are still using Snapchat. And obviously, well, obviously, obviously now, uh, Facebook, because they own Instagram, is obviously benefiting from this news as well. So we're, we're kind of, again, in a very, very delicate place. And this is kind of what brings you uh, to kind of the big picture where we are right now. And, and I've been really talking about this now you know, for several weeks. But as we are approaching Election Day, guys, I'm telling you, trade for cash flow. You don't need uh, that exposure overnight. This Because of the nature of the stocks that we trade every single day, they have such big ranges, average to ranges in the middle of the day, you don't need that exposure overnight. You don't need Pelosi to wake up one morning and say, deal off. You don't need Trump to wake up one, one day and say, deal on. It's all these headlines that is really, you know, you're gambling your money. You, you, between now and the election, you're literally gambling your money. And again, I said this last night in the video, you had a better chance, you, you legitimately have a better chance of betting on Patrick Mahomes yesterday on the money line to making money than having an edge in the afternoon. And that's what we're seeing day in, day out. And I even tweeted this out right before I left. I said, well, what time does the, the, the two o'clock news, the two o'clock shitstorm start, right? And as soon as I logged off, right? It's literally as soon as I logged off around a quarter to three, there you have it. You know, the news came out, everything starts cranking and the 8,600 setups, right? 
sarcastically speaking, that we had for the next day on the long side all of a sudden went to hell in a handbasket. The good news is there's some pretty good short setups for tomorrow, and there's actually some pretty good long setups for tomorrow. So I, I think you, you, you know we're not out of the woods by long shot. Um, I think the strategy every single morning should be you got your three, four-hour window uh, to find aggression, to make sure uh, your setups are playing out the way you want, okay, and then around 1.30, 2 o'clock, just close out your book and just start again the next day because, again, the missiles that are pointing at us, they're real, guys, and we see this every single day, and the last thing we want to do is keep on getting punched in the face, punched in the face, punched in the face. Eventually, you have to duck, right, and, and again, eventually, it starts to hurt. So, again, take care of business in the morning by the afternoon session. If you do have runners, whatever the case may be, manage your book, but, again, be responsible to what you do because from now to the election, there's going to be a whole lot of headlines, a whole lot of curveballs, and the most important part is a whole lot of guessing. And again, we're not in the guessing business. We're just not that smart. We have to react to technical analysis. So going into tomorrow, I mean, pretty basic stuff here. The line in the sand has been drawn now. Uh, two days in a row, we definitely want to watch. And tomorrow, again, we have a biggie, right? We got uh, Tesla coming out with earnings. And again, for weeks and weeks and weeks, and I got, I got this question today in, in a live webinar, like, you know, what do I think about Tesla's earnings? I mean, I love Tesla as a company, right? I, I think the cars are awesome. Um, I obviously love it as a stock. I trade Tesla uh, all the time. I think it's phenomenal. But we don't know, guys. Earnings are a complete crapshoot. Um, you know, if gun to my head, if you look at the, if you look at your option scanner for the last two weeks, there's been millions of dollars, millions and millions of dollars being brought in uh, on the 450 weeklies, on the 470 weeklies. They're they're betting the stock is going to go higher. But when it comes to earnings, man, you can have great news and the stock could still go down 15%. So we, we don't know. Okay, again, if you want to gamble, again, the money line is much easier. Again, you want a good bet. Bet the Buffalo Bills against the Jets. The Jets are putting up a, a junior high school team. Here, you, you want to go into earnings? Bet the Buffalo Bills. At least you have a legitimate shot of recouping your money. Other than that, again, nobody knows what's going to happen you know, into earnings. Uh, again, a lot of good speculation money is going in on Tesla for tomorrow night's uh, earnings. But again, as we say, all bets are off. Again, nobody knows. Uh, for sure. So, um, you know, not a bad day. Not a bad day at all. Um, I think th there's a lot of good value. Ironically, I, I really didn't think there's going to be a lot of good value going into tomorrow's session, but there's some good value on both sides. And if you look on some of the moves, and we'll talk about the individual pivots in a second, you could see the downward bias, you know, really playing out, especially on the high flyers today. Like, for example, we had Beyond today. Uh, it was a really good short. Um, you know, I mean, if I would have held it for an extra dollar, maybe it would have been a great short, but it was a really good short and trade into supply. But at least, again, this is kind of mirroring the, you know, the, the cues. Again, one more channel goes down, this thing goes lower. Uh, ZM it was, a, was a great move today, right? Really, really great move today. Again, we'll talk about the individual pivots in a second. This thing is one candle away from seeing 517. So we're getting the setups. Even names like Roku, who will, who will probably uh, not like... Right, probably not like what uh, what the earnings report for for Netflix looks like. Again, it confirmed down today. It just needs one more candle to potentially get very very aggressive. So there's a lot of value tomorrow on the short side. I still like the video. The funny thing is. I really liked NVIDIA yesterday. If you guys remember the video, it came nowhere close to confirming, but look how close it is to confirming. And that's kind of my point. There's a lot of really good value developing on the short side. We just have to wait for confirmation. And on the flip side, there's actually some good value on the long side as well. Like look at these names like NIO, for example, right? Again, huge $30 calls, weekly calls, for example, for today, right? Really, really aggressive weekly call buying. The stock's at $28. They're betting the 30s by Friday. Okay, has my interest. Again, the stock reclaimed the five-day moving average. Again, something we need to watch. Even Twitter, right? Twitter, for God's sake. Twitter, they finally realized that you have to actually make money to actually make money. Twitter today, right? Again, all it needs is one more day to confirm this channel, and the stock will go as well. So we are kind of set up on both sides for tomorrow, okay, which is actually a good thing. Uh, so when the market opens up, all we need to do is kind of wait for these channels to confirm. So at least I have kind of a generic bias for tomorrow, okay? But as long as the queues stay above uh, that 282, 282 and a half level, I think we have to give the bulls the benefit of the doubt. But as soon as we start losing, guys, and again, there's no room for interpretation. As soon as we start losing this whole channel here, we are going to go down uh, to the 50-day moving average. So uh, let's quickly talk about... Uh, today's moves, uh, some big moves, uh, some, you know, 
not big moves, some moves that kind of went up a little bit and stalled out, but you know, something literally for everything. So uh, DraftKings uh, came out with, with uh, their lockup period, um, and I kind of said, listen, there's a possible washout. A lot of people, you know, all of a sudden think lockup of automatically going to sell everything in sight, and that's kind of true. But again, at the end of the day, there are, you know, there, there are trades that, again, if a lockup gets absorbed, it will go higher. It kind of did both, right? So they got the early washout in the morning, and I said, if this thing could go red to green, there's a trade there. And if it confirms, obviously, 45, yesterday's highs, it'll go higher. So it went red to green. It actually did go red to green, and it went right to 44.97, and wah, 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 so kind of failed, right? But again, if you took it red to green and failed at 45, at least you got 50 cents to show for it. If not, yada, yada, yada. Again, the stock needs to reclaim this whole area here uh, to go higher. Uh, anyway, NVIDIA, you know, I still like NVIDIA. That 536 level obviously never got to it. Uh, Amazon never got to the 3190 level. Uh, this was a really good trade. Uh, we, we were watching the downside of Beyond. Excuse me. If you guys remember two videos again, I said there was a potential trade to the upside on Beyond and to the downside Beyond. Well, the downside finally confirmed. And that's, again, the beautiful part about pivots. We don't care which direction they're going to confirm. As long as they confirm and they confirm with volume, we're good to go. So uh, I tweeted this out. Uh, 189 to the upside, 180 and a half, 180 to the downside, and it broke. It broke down very, very nicely. This whole channel here, right? This whole here is the bottom right here. This uh, 180 and a half level, and once it broke, it broke, and it went really, really well, uh, all the way down to all the way down to this uh, 75 and change area. For, unfortunately for me, my lowest cover uh, was 78, but it is what it is. Um, again, nothing, no complaints. Again, I still think it needs. One more candle to get this thing down. Um, yeah, Facebook, again, I did not expect Facebook to do what it did today. Okay, I, I am, I'm the first person to admit it. I thought, you know, can you get 65 and a half, six, maybe 66 for the stock? That I believed, right, for cash flow, but it kept on getting rejected two times pre-market. I said, it needs to build above there for cash flow. Again, I got, got upgraded today, but again, I felt like this is a cash flow market that again, everything was rentals, you know, don't really get in love in anything. And yeah, Facebook apparently did not get my memo. Uh, for all you guys who, who caught the whole move, congratulations. I know I spoke to Matt, Matt is still long calls. Great job. So here is the whole, you know, here is the whole break, right? So here is the whole break. Uh, and it went, it went up two bucks and then it came down like for like 30 seconds and then it just absolutely exploded again, benefiting uh, from the Snapchat move. But again, who the hell could figure out that Facebook was going to put up a nine run home run today? Um, Space, Space actually had a funny move today. And here's the funny story. If you guys don't know, Jim Chanos is Satan, right? For all you guys who don't know, Jim Chanos is the ultimate perma bear. This guy still blames his mother. Okay, just to give you an idea for giving birth to him. Just to, this is the kind of human being he is. He's, just, he's the complete bear. He hates every stock. He hates every market. He hates everything. Again, I don't know how somebody can go through life doing this, but this is who he is. And apparently he made a comment at some point today that he actually liked space. Okay, so space. So, um, you know, 2375, right? 2375, 24, if it needs to build, can go. So it takes out that 2375, it goes to like 24 and a half, and then, then Jim Chanos comes out because the Satan of the septic tank that he is, septic tank that he is, comes out and say, I was just being sarcastic. Really? Being sarcastic? Okay. You're still the devil. So again, it is what it is. For you guys who caught the trade, great job. Uh, this was the big one of the day, and I think there's more downside to it. Uh, I, I made a mistake. My, my dyslexia, it's not, it obviously wasn't 462, 461. It was 562, 561. If it builds below, uh, can flush. And ZM flushed. Okay, ZM really, really flushed. So here was the whole 62 area. Uh, that was the previous day's low, and it flushed. and went all the way down, as you can see, trading in the 530s after market. Uh, if this thing, again, if this thing can just confirm today's channel tomorrow, uh, hell, you can get a move to 5.710. You can get a move to 500, right? So again, but baby steps. Uh, confirms today's channel. Uh, I still like it more for tomorrow's uh, day. We'll keep an eye on that as well. Uh, Pinterest, I still like. Never got there. Uh, team, I think, can, I think tried to confirm uh, in the afternoon right before the sell-off. Nothing really there. 
Uh, DDOG, nothing there. And, I, and I, again, I kept on reminding people over and over again. Uh, remember, we're two weeks away from election. The market will not put in a macro move until, um, you know, until then. Uh, expect tons of headlines in between. This means there's going to be a chop, tighter channels, decrease your size, trade for cash flow. Again, very, very specific directions. I think tomorrow we will be looking at the same thing. Uh, net uh, experienced traders only, 57.50, 57 for bills below can flush. I still like it. Um, it closed under, it closed under 57. You know, I still like it, okay? I think if it confirms today's channel, maybe it has one move lower. Again, you can see here three lower highs. It just needs one more push with volume to get it through, so I still like that. Uh, FSLY gave a quick trade, you know, 50 cent move, uh, nothing really to talk about there, 85 to 85 and a half. Uh, Neo, again, this is a big level. I, I like the setup for tomorrow. Um, it keeps on getting rejected off this 2820s. Keep an eye on this thing tomorrow. Again, you have Tesla, possibly a run-up into earnings. The whole electric car vehicle market is hot. And again, man, those $30 calls are really something we need to pay attention to. So definitely keep an eye on Neo for tomorrow. Uh, Zoom, nice move. Take on the way up, FSLY. Uh, again, I said 544 target. Obviously, it wasn't 562. It, it took out the 544, obviously, went lower. Uh, as well, uh, beyond again, I just you know I just couldn't hold on for that last move. Went to like 75 and change. Uh, it's waking up, blah blah blah. Red to green, space new highs, um, and that's it, right? And that's it. So yeah, we're set up for tomorrow. Um, again, I have a game plan on the long side, on the short side. We want to make sure what happens next is technically. We're not guessing. We're not trying to. Uh, anticipate the trade, especially in this type of environment. Make sure you get your ducks in a row and everything takes place organically. Guys, God bless. I love you all, and I'll see you all tomorrow.